Hey guys, we have evening prayer happening on the computer tonight. Always something changing, always something different, but that's okay. We're going to roll with it and keep trucking. I have 20 encouraging Bible verses for these end times days. This is actually a really good uh, short article with some scripture in there. Guys, it's clear that we're in the end times. I mean, let's just be real about this. You can't go to the Bible and find a prophecy that hasn't either been fulfilled or is currently in the process of being fulfilled. There's never been a time like this ever. Um, uh, speculators and uh, business executives and, and all these guys that, that look in, into futures, all of them now are on record as saying any, anybody who says they can predict what's happening next is a liar. We, we're in uncharted territory. We're in dark waters. We don't know what's going to happen because we've never been here before. They're, they're terrified of what's coming next because what it looks like is happening next is absolutely the opposite of what they want to happen. I think God has used this to put everybody in check so everybody would everybody will pay attention and look and know that he is God. If they don't figure it out now, rapture is going to happen. And guys, I mean, look at what's going on around the world. It's amazing. We've ne when have they ever had barrel or oil so cheap they had to actually had to pay people to take it? When have we had this many interstellar objects in our solar system at the same time? Two comet debris fields we're about to pass through. Two! Another interstellar comet on the way behind Atlas. Planetary alignments out the wazoo. Volcanoes erupting nonstop. It just keeps going. We've got Antichrist talk. We've got Temple talk. We've got the false prophet going. We've got New World Order being activated right before our eyes. While we're on this Earth... Never had that before, ever. Let's go through a couple of scriptures. The world today is overrun by polytheism, nepotism, greed, and a struggle for position and power. With each passing day, we see prophecy being fulfilled, and things that the Bible spoke of are now coming to pass. We ought not be ignorant of the times, because clearly we are living in the last days. The writer of Matthew 24, 6, 8 wrote, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. You go back in the past and look at all these things, these things have been around for a little bit. But notice, it's only gotten bad in the last 100 years. Notice, it only started getting this way after we started going to and fro because it's only only a little over 100 years ago we started flying i know that sounds hard to believe but it was only a little over 100 years ago that we started flying that automobiles ruled the road people traveled like they you know they could go to town every day instead of once a month like they used to because it was horse and wagon at that time it's been like that for almost 2000 years it's only the last hundred years that things have really changed. Amazingly, everything has changed. Even the prophecy has changed. Where there is the beginning of sorrows, it implies that at some time or another we all need encouragement. Not only are we to encourage ourselves in spite of what's happening in our own situation, God requires of us to be light in the world and to be a source of hope, comfort, and, cons and consolation to each other. These next few Bible verses have encouraged me and lifted my spirit in dark times. And it is my hope that they will do the same for you today. We need strength. Fear not, there is nothing to fear, for I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of, right, of rightness and justice. And this is Isaiah 41.10 out of the Amplified Bible. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be affrighted. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9 in the ESV. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. Psalm 46.1. Now we have proof of God's faithfulness. In spite of the difficulties and the situations that confront us, there is proof of God's faithfulness. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. 1 Corinthians 10.13 
The Lord also will be a refuge and a stronghold for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And those who know your name, who have experienced your precious mercy, will put their confident trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not abandoned those who seek you. Psalm 9, nine. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, and faithful the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Deuteronomy 7, nine in the ESV. We must never lose hope. Now, may God, the source of hope, fill you with all joy and peace as you believe, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 15.13 in the ISV. Guys, I, I can tell you with all honesty, I'm in a place now, spiritually, I've never been before. I, I know the things are happening. I see them happening. I see the articles. I see the headlines. I watch the videos, and I have no fear. I'm it's, it's such a place of peace. It's almost distracting. It's almost like something's wrong. I feel like something's wrong. I thought I would be more excited. I thought I would be more wound up. I thought I would be more on edge. It's just not there. I have never been in the place that I'm at right now. Never. It is amazing. Many other people have this testimony too. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you are involved in various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. But you must let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. James 1, 2-4 Don't allow anything to distract you. This is a big problem right now. Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. Isaiah 49, 13. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. This is important. That's very important. Colossians 3, 2. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for human masters. Colossians 3, 23. To focus our minds on the human nature leads to death. Listen. On the human nature leads to death. But to focus our minds on the spirit leads to life and peace. Romans 8, 6. Go read Romans 8, 6 in context. To focus our minds on the human nature leads to death. We're, we're called after we're saved to not to worry about what's going on with the flesh. To focus on God. To focus on the spirit. This flesh is dead. This flesh is wasting away to dust. But the spirit is is what's been energized and made alive. It's the spirit that translates. This flesh does not go to heaven. Flesh can't inherit heaven. The Bible says that. Go read Romans 8, 6. Read it in context. Read all of Romans 8. Actually, Romans 8 is a very good chapter. He, God's promise to guide. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Psalm 32, 8. We all have his spirit within us. He counsels us every day. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your, all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make, your, make straight your paths. Proverbs 3, 5-6 through six. His word is a lamp unto my and your feet, and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105 God's everlasting love and his covenant. No power in the sky above or the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 8, 39. You need to read Romans 8 after you watch this video. That tells you you are eternally secure. That tells you once saved, always saved is true. Guys, I, I can't be more bold about this and more direct about this. People are telling you, oh no, you better repent every day. What are you repenting of? Oh no, you better make sure you're right with the Lord. What do I need to do other than faith? Because all the Bible says just to believe. We know the truth. We're called to be bold in the truth. Stand up for the truth and tell these people to stop talking. They're wrong because they're putting you back under condemnation. And I'm watching brothers and sisters here on YouTube go back into condemnation. No, come out of her, my people. The Bible doesn't tell you that. Go read Romans 8. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal, eternal life. John 3.16 Thank you, Father, for your wonderful gift and thank you, Lord Jesus, for your wonderful sacrifice. God hears and answers our prayers. In the midst of all the noise, chaos, and confusion, God hears and answers prayers. You guys know this because he's done it on my channel. Call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and mighty things. 
which you do not know. Jeremiah 33.3. That's happened. That's happened to a whole lot of us watchmen. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. 1 John 5.14. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. Psalm 91.15. Now be patient while you wait. And this is Psalm 37.7. And there's more than just this one verse. There's a bunch of verses about being patient. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for Him to act. Don't worry about evil, evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Guys, look up. Look up, look up, look up. You need to be reading your Bible every single day. You need to find some part to start in and read. I don't care what version you get, go get one. Whatever you can find and start reading it. He'll lead you to the truth. But you have to make that decision to lay this world down, lay all its cares down. You have to make it up here and you got to make it in here and say, Lord, I don't want this anymore. I want you. I want whatever you have for me. And you have to make that choice. And then go to him and watch your life change before your very eyes. Other people will see it too. But watch your life change before you're buried. It's amazing to see. I've witnessed it personally, in myself and in others. It's amazing. Enlightenment. When, it, when an enlightenment hits, you see it happen. The person changes. Everything about them changes. It's amazing. Please, read, read, read. After this video, go read Romans 8. Go off by yourself. Do like I do. I go fake poop and go to the bathroom and read. Go in, the, in somewhere quiet and read Romans 8. While you're laying in bed tonight, you have a Bible app on your phone, read Romans 8. Read it and think about what it's saying. You can read all of Colossians. Colossians is great. Contemplate those things. Think about those things. Look at the world today and think, am I scared? And if you are, go find scriptures that talk about what you're feeling. And look at the reassurance that's given to us. We are eternally secure in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are sealed for the day of redemption by God. The gift of salvation is free. There's nothing you have to do for it except believe. That's it. There's no works. There's no repentance. There's no the, the repentance is at the moment of conversion. The Greek word is metanoia. It's a change of mind. There's two Greek words used. Both of them mean a change of mind. That's you saying, you know what? I don't want to be saved anymore. I don't want to be uh, unsaved anymore. I want to be saved. And you turn and the, the scriptures even say it. Guys, don't let these YouTube preachers confuse you. Don't let me confuse you. Read your Bible. Everything you need is in there. This is the, fi this is the, the big finale. This is the final stroke of the pen. That door is shut. If you don't get it now, when it's sealed, that's it. Nobody else will be going. You need to deal with this now. You need to straighten this out now. And if you're already in the Lord... Lay all your worries down at his feet. Lay all your troubles down. Guys, I'm in so much pain, but you know what? It just hasn't even been on my radar. I struggle, I move, I get up, but my focus is my four-year-old nephew, taking care of him, making sure he has what he needs. My focus has been loving everyone I can, loving you guys, trying to get y'all's comments and emails, which I've been struggling with giving you guys these morning and evening prayers which have been uplifting and edifying for you guys. Doing exactly what the Bible says we should do in the end times, which is build each other up, strengthen each other, give each other hope. That's what he wants us to do. That's what he's calling for us to do, especially now. Prophecy will be fulfilled. Signs will cease. Gifts will go away. But the love of God will always be there. And the love we have for each other will always be there. And that strength and edification will always be there. If you have a YouTube ministry, focus on that. Lay all this other nonsense aside. If you got fears, great. Push them over here and put him right here in front of you. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to question. It's okay to wonder. But don't let that rule your life. Let him rule your life. And watch how fast those things disappear. Your confidence will grow a thousand times. Your boldness will grow. You got people in your life making fun of you? Get aggressive. Say, hey, hold on a second. Don't tell me anything about this. This is what I believe in. 
I don't mock you for what you believe in. So if I, if, forgive me for giving you hope in this world where you have none. And turn around and walk away from them. Leave them thinking. They'll remember that after the rapture happens. They'll turn because of that after the rapture happens. Leave them with good, strong memories of you. Memories where you stood up and had integrity. Memories where you gave them the truth and didn't deny it to them. Because when the snap happens, they will remember that and they will convert and they will meet us in heaven. There's no more time for deliberation. There's no more time. I've been invited to a bunch of debates. No time, guys. <clears throat> if we had, if it was a few years ago, sure, I'd debate you. No time. I don't have time to deal with hatred. I don't have time to deal with any of that stuff. The time is now to get the gospel out there. The time is to tell people about Jesus Christ, about God, and about what's about to happen. The rapture of the church, the bride, is about to happen. Our world will never be the same after this. It will never, ever go back to the same. You think that, you're deceiving yourself. We've never been in this place before. And it's only going to get worse from here. The only hope you have is Jesus Christ. Let's get into some prayer. Lord, we come before you this really beautiful, quiet evening in hope. Hope of deliverance. Hope of redemption. Hope in you and in your love and in your mercy that you have showered upon us. This amazing grace that you have bestowed on us. This free gift of salvation we claim in your name. Thank you for this incredible wondrous gift. I, I pray we would even come to 0.1% of being worthy of it. But we are not worthy of it. You have made us worthy through your sacrifice and your blood. And we love you and we thank you. And in your name we praise you and we bless you. We lift you up for all the world to see as a shining bright light and a hope for the whole world. We know not everybody's going to get saved. We know not everybody is going to be ready when the time comes. But we can still proclaim the truth in the gospel. We can, I can do it in these prayer videos. I can do it in any other video. I can do it on the street. I can do it in front of my family and friends. I pray that you put this heart of boldness in every brother and sister. That this, this strength and this hope and this resolution of what's coming. Take the doubt away. Take the fear away. Take the questioning away. Lord, let us show us all that we're saved. Let us know where we stand and that we may stand and deliver. We may lay this world to the side, push everything out of the way, put you right in front of us and show you to the world. There's no more time for debate and deliberation. Everything that needed to be said has been said. If they don't have it now, they're not going to get it till later. Lord, you've given us such an amazing hope to look forward to this, this rapture this rescue of the church you've given us scripture that proves it, you've given us clear understanding and revelation about this, you've shown us what these prophecies mean where many of us have never even heard of this stuff before yet you've taken people from every walk of life and given them these revelations and brought them into a ministry to share it with the world I can only hope and pray that these videos will still be available for everyone to be able to see after everything changes. But even if they're not, Lord, we trust in you to have this under control. We trust that you will get everyone that is going to be saved. You will rescue and save everyone possible. No one will be left behind that isn't supposed to be left behind. No one will be cast away that isn't supposed to be cast away. I trust you for everything. I believe what you say. I believe your word. And you have, because I've done that, you have taken all the fear away. You have put me in a place of such amazing peace. I can't even describe how amazing it is. That I just don't have any anxiety over this stuff. I don't have any, any, um, I'm, not, I'm not holding back. All I think about is this. I can't think about anything else. There's little snippets here and there of things that get in there, but it's always, always this. This dominates my life. You've given me a wonderful ministry. You've given many of the brothers and sisters wonderful ministries. And they have grown. And they have become strengthened. And they have stood up in these final end times to proclaim the gospel of truth, to proclaim you to the world. Thank you for these brothers and sisters that have joined me in these prayers, that have joined me in ministry, 
and we have come together to be able to proclaim truth to plant seeds to lead some at least one to salvation to bring brothers and sisters back to truth back to you back under your wings Lord I pray blessings over my brothers and sisters I pray peace for every heart that believes in you and watches over you I pray salvation for all those who are unsaved I pray guidance for all of us who are looking and searching and a desire, a strong desire to be bold in these final moments to stand up and to show the world they may not listen they may not believe us but they'll sure remember us. When everything changes, they will remember us. And they will come after. They will be able to get saved. Because they will remember our words. They will remember what we said. They will change. And they will convert. And come and stand before you in the throne room in heaven. We love you, Lord. It is in your name. I pray blessings for my brothers and sisters. And we pray and bless you. Pray to you and bless you. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for evening prayer. This is it. It's all over. Last year at this time, go look at the videos that all the people were doing last year at this time. Look at what we were talking about. Look at the things that were going on. In one year's time, everything has changed completely the other direction. Last year, we, we thought the rapture was going to happen. We were looking at Passover. We were looking at Pentecost. But, to be Shabbat, but look at where we're at now. The whole world has changed. Everything has changed. Everything is being affected. The Antichrist is alive right now in this world, waiting to take control, waiting to step up. We're keeping him from doing that. We have to be removed in order for him to take power. That's what's next. That's about to happen. Stay strong. Stay looking up. I'm going to work harder to try to get to more emails and to get to comments. I'm babysitting full time now, so I'm there all day. But I'll try to catch up you know, during the day or uh, at night when I come home. And if I'm able to do a quick video on headlines or something, I'll do it. Get it in there. But guys, this is it. If you're still struggling with making the decision, I implore you, vehemently implore you, make it now. Make it now. You have nothing to lose and everything to everything to gain. Because after the rapture is the seals. The seals are horrible and terrible and earth-shattering. And they're not even as bad as what the seven-year tribulation would be. Because the tribulation comes right after starts at the seventh seal and it's going to be worse than anything that has ever existed on this earth then it gets real bad halfway through even worse than what it was when it started you don't want to be here for that don't take that chance go to Christ now cry out to him Lord show me Lord save me I'm a sinner and I need salvation look in the description of the videos ABC's of salvation start somewhere because that door when it's closed that's it when that door closed on that ark, then people stood out there for a week contemplating what happened. And when the rain started to fall, there was nothing they could do. They couldn't open the door. God sealed that door. When this door closes for the rapture, that's it. God will seal this door. Don't wait till the door shuts. Don't wait till the last minute. Do it now. If you're a Christian and you've wandered away, Get into prayer. Cry out to Him. Reach out to Him. Tell Him what's bothering you. And beg Him to give you strength. He will give you strength. Make the effort. Do the work. Read your scriptures. This isn't between me, you, and Him. It's between you and Him. Go to Him. And He will help you. He is very faithful for that. I love you guys very much. I want to say more, but I can't at this point. <laughs> I have to save a little bit for something else. Love you guys very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray you guys have a fabulous, quiet evening, and I will see you in the next video.